So, Madam Chair and members, I'll be starting the walkthrough with Article 1, which is the Department of Health Finance Article. Sections 1 through 6 are from House File 4398 as amended, which is the governor's bill. Um, this is compliance with the Federal No Surprises Act, and it includes requiring the Commissioner of Health to enforce balance billing requirements, modifying consumer balance billing protections, and expanding continuity of care for pregnant patients who change health plans. The next group is sections 7 through 9 and section 98. This is from House File 3696, the first engrossment. This makes changes to the all payer claims database by requiring the collection of data on non claims based payments and modifying the allowable uses of the data. It also requires a report on healthcare spending across payment models. Section 10 is a governor's proposal. It reestablishes in statute the Advisory Council on Water Supply Systems and Wastewater Treatment Facilities. Section 11 is also a governor's proposal. It establishes an annual licensing base fee plus a per bed and per bassinet fee for hospitals with the funds to be used for trauma hospital designations. Next group of sections, sections 12 to 15 and section 101 paragraph B relate to um, loan forgiveness programs. Um, and the bills that it pulls from are, or that the sections pull from are House File 853, which makes acupuncture practitioners practicing in designated rural areas eligible for loan forgiveness under the Health Professional Education Loan Forgiveness Program. Um, section or uh, House File 3418, the first engrossment with some changes. This makes mental health professionals who provide clinical supervision in their designated field eligible for loan forgiveness under the program. House File 3860 language makes nurses who practice in a school setting eligible for loan forgiveness under the program. House File 3242, as amended with some changes. Um, provides that nurses who agree to teach according to the requirements in the Health Professional Education Loan Forgiveness Program are exempt from program requirements regarding um, when the service obligation must begin and the maximum number of years of participation. Language from House File 4213 um, with a DE amendment. Um, this changes a term used to define certain providers eligible for the Loan Forgiveness Program. Um, and it expands eligibility for loan forgiveness to certain providers who work in a practice with at least 25% of their patients from an underserved patient population. And language from House File 4398 as amended, um, which is a governor's proposal, makes public health employees who work for a public health department in an area of high need eligible for loan forgiveness under the program. Moving to section 16, which is from House File 2715. This authorizes a home and community-based services provider who receives a grant from the HCBS Services Employee Scholarship Program to also provide loan forgiveness with those same funds. Section 17, which is from House File 3242 as amended with changes, establishes a hospital nursing loan forgiveness program. Sections 18, 19, and 22 are governor's proposals. Um, these are healthcare workforce program proposals, um, and they establish a health professionals rural and underserved clinical rotation grant program, a primary care rural residency training grant program, and a grant program to support clinical training for healthcare students in areas of high need where there are shortages of healthcare professionals. Sections 20 and 21 are from House File 3418. These are mental health work workforce initiatives establishing the Mental Health Provider Supervision Grant Program and the Mental Health Professional Scholarship Grant Program. Section 23 is from House File 2663. This establishes procedures for the commissioner to uh, and the courts to change the sex of an individual on a birth certificate at the request of the birth certificate subject or the request of the subject's parent or guardian if the subject is a minor. Section 24 is a governor's proposal. It authorizes the commissioner to maintain a database of lead service lines, provide technical assistance to community water systems, and ensure inventory data and education materials are accessible to the public. 
Section 25 is a governor's proposal. It modifies fees for department review and approval of engineering plans for healthcare facility construction and remodeling projects. Um, so sections 26 to 30, 92, 95, and section 101 paragraph C are all from House File 3242 as amended. Um, these sections require hospitals to establish hospital nursing staffing committees, require um, development, implementation, and public posting of hospital core staffing plans and documentation of compliance with core staffing plans. Um, prohibit uh, retaliation against hospital employees for certain conduct and uh, require the commissioner to collect data on the supply of nurses in the state and nurse retention. Section 31 is a governor's proposal. This is the drug overdose and substance abuse prevention initiative that requires the commissioner to provide grants for eight regional overdose prevention teams and to provide a grant for a homeless overdose prevention hub um, and to provide grants and contracts to support recovery friendly work environments. Section 32 is from House File 3898. This lowers what constitutes an elevated blood lead level and triggers public health response activities under the Lead Poisoning Prevention Act. Section 33 is a governor's proposal. This is the Climate Resiliency Program. It directs the commissioner to establish a climate resiliency program and to issue grants to local organizations to plan for the health impacts of extreme weather events and develop adaptation actions. Section 34 is a governor's proposal. These are um, activities related to long COVID, um, requiring the commissioner to conduct community needs assessment and studies, um, and uh, also requires the commissioner to establish a surveillance system to address long COVID and to identify and implement actions to support long COVID survivors and their families. Sections 35 through 37 are governor's proposals that uh, require the commissioner to administer and oversee lifeline centers to answer calls to the National Suicide Prevention uh, uh, Lifeline. Section 38 and section 101 paragraph D are from House File 3886, the first engrossment uh, as amended. This is the universal voluntary home visiting program for families expecting or caring for an infant. Section 39 is a governor's proposal. It authorizes the commissioner to administer a program to expand access to harm reduction services and provide linkages to care and um, to prevent infectious diseases in people experiencing homelessness or housing instability. Section 40 is um, a governor's proposal and also from House File 4099 as amended. Um, the section establishes the community solutions for healthy child development program in statute, which was originally a temporary grant program established in 2020. Um, and it was funded for fiscal years 2020 to 2023. Section 21 is a governor's proposal that establishes a grant program for remediation of lead sources in drinking water in schools and childcare settings. Section 42, it's from House File 1419, the first division engrossment, and um, also a governor's proposal, which establishes a Skin Lightning Project's Public Awareness and Education Grant Program at MDH. Section 43 is a governor's proposal. Um, it is the Community Health Worker Initiative. So it requires the commissioner to support collaboration to expand the community health worker workforce and directs the commissioner to issue a grant to a nonprofit community organization to expand that workforce. Section 44 is a governor's initiative um, regarding reducing health disparities among people with disabilities, um, requires the commissioner to coordinate with partners to address barriers to healthcare for people with disabilities, conduct a community needs assessment and establish a health surveillance and tracking plan. Um, also to issue grants and provide technical assistance. Section 45 is a governor's proposal. It allows the commissioner to award a grant to a nonprofit organization to support public health AmeriCorps members. Section 46, also a governor's proposal. This is the uh, Healthy Beginnings, Healthy Families Act. This establishes a Minnesota collaborative to prevent infant mortality, authorizes grants to improve infant health, establishes the Help Me Connect online navigator 
to connect pregnant and parenting families with um, local services. It also authorizes a universal screening program to identify young children at risk for developmental and behavioral concerns and permits grants to implement model jail practices to prevent or to benefit children of incarcerated parents. Section 47 um, is a governor's proposal and also from House File 3114. Um, this is the Minnesota, the Minnesota School Health Initiative, which establishes a program to provide grants to support existing school-based health centers and establish new school-based health centers. Sections 48 through 50 are governor's proposals that modify the funding formula for community health centers to include funding for foundational public health responsibilities. Um, sections also specify uses of community health board funds for foundational public health responsibilities and provide grants to tribal governments. Sections 51 through 74 are from House File 1888, the second engrossment. Um, these sections establish registration for transfer care specialists and authorizes them to transfer dead human bodies from the place of death to funeral establishments. It also, these sections also extend the period a, uh, of time a body may be kept in refrigeration before final disposition. Sections 75, 77, 81, 82, and 89 are from House File 4387 um, with an A3 amendment. These are changes to the medical cannabis program. Um, the sections require the commissioner to increase the number of registered manufacturers, requires manufacturer that is a business entity to be incorporated in Minnesota. Um, sections establish background study requirements for controlling persons of a manufacturer and require the commissioner to return part of an application fee if an applicant um, for, to be a manufacturer is not selected. Sections 76, 78 through 80, in, and 83 through 88 are from House File 3162, the second engrossment. This is um, the Tribal Medical Cannabis Program Bill. Um, these sections permit a medical cannabis, cannabis manufacturer to distribute um, to tribal medical cannabis program patients. Um, sections allow a tribal medical cannabis program to transport medical cannabis to testing laboratories and to other Indian lands. Um, also allow patients enrolled in the state medical cannabis program to receive medical cannabis from a tribal program and extend protections in state law to tribal medical cannabis program patients and employees. Section 89 is from House File 3119 uh, with one change. It lowers patient enrollment fees for the medical cannabis program from $50 um, for patients who are enrolled in uh, state public health care programs um, or receive certain disability payments and um, $200 for all other patients to $40 for all patients. Sections 90 and 101 paragraph A are from uh, their governor's provisions and also from House File 4113. These are modifications to the Mental Health Cultural Community Continuing Education Grant Program. Um, and they, the modifications would allow grant funds to cover supervision costs for mental health professionals to become supervisors and supervision costs for practitioners pursuing professional license, licensure. Section 91 is house, uh, from House File 2499. This is a contract with University of Minnesota for a benefit and cost analysis of the legislative proposal for a universal health care financing system. Section 93 is from House File 2586. Um, with the DE amendment. This establishes the Emmett Lewis Till Victims Recovery Program, requiring the commissioner to provide grants to community-based organizations for services for victims for, of trauma from government-sponsored activities and uh, their families. Sections 94 and 96 are governor's proposals, um, and these sections require the commissioner to identify strategies to reduce administrative spending and uh, low-value healthcare. Sections also require the commissioner to develop a plan to assess the readiness of rural health care providers um, to ad adopt value-based global budgeting. 
or alternative payment systems and to recommend steps for implementation. Section 97 is from House File 3862 uh, as amended by a DE amendment. This uh, section directs the commissioner to distribute COVID-19 tests, masks, and respirators to individuals in the state. Section 99 is a governor's proposal. It requires the commissioner to distribute grants to state licensed long-term care facilities for projects to improve the safety, quality of care, and livability of facilities. And finally, section 100 is from House File 3660. This is a study of the development of a statewide registry for provider orders for life-sustaining treatment. And that concludes Article 1. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Sunderman. Uh, there's a little bit of work in there, obviously yours and a lot of people. So questions from members, anything technical uh, for Ms. Sunderman? All right, not seeing anything, so we can move on to Article 2. And members, if you have your um, either a paper copy, as I do, or you're looking at it online, Article 2 begins on page 103. So, Ms. Sunderman, is that you, or are we going to Mr. No, uh, Chun? Madam Chair. Um, All I'm right, sorry. Mr. Chun, thank you. So, Article 2 is the Department of Health Policy article. So, it begins on page 103 of the Delete All Amendment. Uh, section one is House File 3975. It deals with nursing home resident assessment schedules. It specifies two circumstances in which a significant change of status assessment is not required. Sections two and three are from House File 4000. These change the definition of byproduct material in sections that govern radioactive materials. Then sections Four and 65 are from House File 4,112. These change the membership of the Rural Health Advisory Committee, also established the Health Equity Advisory and Leadership Council at the Health Department. Section five is from House File 4214. It eliminates certain data posting and reporting requirements related to ST elevation, myocardial infarction response, treatment, and outcomes. Then sections 6 and 76 are House File 2812. They provide an exception to the hospital construction moratorium for North Shore Health and Grand Marais. Also require the uh, commissioner to provide recommendations and whether similar exceptions should be authorized for other hospitals. Then section six is House File 3470, provides an exception to the hospital moratorium for Children's Hospital in St. Paul, authorizing addition of beds for pediatric inpatient behavioral health services. Then section seven is House File 3874. This excludes dental clinics and offices that perform diagnostic imaging using dental cone beam computerized tomography from the definition of diagnostic imaging facility. So it's an exemption from certain annual reporting requirements. Then section eight is House File 4063. It requires hospitals before they discharge a patient who is uninsured or whose insurance status is not known to screen the, pa screen the patient for eligibility for charity care public health care programs and premium tax credits. Then sections 9, 23, 24, 20, and 26 to 64 uh, modify a requirement for electronic monitoring of residents of certain long-term care settings. Uh, they also modify the membership and duties of the Home Care and Assisted Living Program Advisory Council and modify provisions that govern assisted living facilities. Then uh, section 10 is House File 4025. It amends the Healthcare Bill of Rights to require healthcare facilities and providers to allow at least one designated support person with a pregnant patient that is receiving healthcare services. Sections 11 and 77 are from House File 3871. They make changes to the cancer reporting system, allowing health department staff to interview cancer patients after notification of the provider 
It allows the cancer reporting system to share certain data with other state and national cancer registries. Then sections 12 to 16 are House File 3873. They modify definitions of certain types of lead work in the Lead Poisoning Prevention Act. They modify activities that may be conducted without a license or certification to perform lead work. Then sections 17 to 22 and 77 are from House File 4573. They modify nursing home licensure statutes related to changes of ownership. Then uh, section 25 is from House File 3148, modifies the definition of palliative care in the hospice care statutes. Then section 66 is from House File 4001, requires the commissioner to receive an individual's application to work as a guest tattoo technician, guest body piercing technician, or guest body art, body art technician at least 14 days before the applicant conducts the body art procedure. Then section 67 to 75 are from House File 3876. Uh, they make changes to the medical, medical cannabis statutes, require implementation of a state centralized electronic database, require laboratories to collect or contract for the collection of cannabis samples from the manufacturer, and modify provisions related to transportation. And that's the end of the walk before Article 2. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Chun. And uh, Mr. McQuillan also reminds me that in our documents, document four is a bill list. So that is another way for members to follow along. I know it is. Uh, it can be very confusing to go through omnibus bills and just for the public and for members who may be newer to this process, um, what makes this I think really confusing for um, people who aren't used to this is that the bill always is written with the sections in, or in the order in which they would occur in the statutes. And that's why sections of um, bills that members may have submitted that we may have heard in committee, we find them sometimes in different sections of the omnibus bill and it can be uh, confusing for that reason. So that bill list that is posted with our documents may be of assistance to members as we go through this. So, okay, so I think we're now on article three and is Mr. Chun, is that sure. still you? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Please, please uh, so proceed. So Madam Chair, article three is the healthcare finance article. So it begins on page 170 of the delete all amendment. Sections one to eight and 55 are from House File 4430. These establish a healthcare affordability board that's authorized to set healthcare spending growth targets for a five year period to require performance improvement plans and take other steps to reduce healthcare spending increases. And the board is also required to establish an office of consumer protection. Then a number of sections, sections 9, 11, 26, 34 to 36, 38, 39, and 56 are from House File 3365. These will eliminate cost sharing under MA and Minnesota Care, effective January 1 of 2023. Then Section 10 is House File 3839. This requires DHS to include information on dental provider enrollment in their annual reports that they submit on dental utilization. Sections 12, 25, 27, and 40 are from House File 3153. They expand MA coverage of, of tobacco and nicotine cessation services. The changes include covering phone counseling through a quit line, expanding eligible providers, and eliminating certain prior authorization, uh, volume, and cost sharing requirements. Then section 13 is House File 4576. This is a, a governor's recommendation, provides MA coverage for former foster care youth who had been enrolled in Medicaid in another state. Sections 14, 48, and 49, uh, also governor's recommendations. These make various changes in eligibility and other procedures for healthcare programs related to the transition from the public health emergency. Then section 15 is House File 2773. Um, this increases the income limit and spend down limit 
for persons who are elderly or have disabilities so that the limits are 133% of the poverty guidelines effective July 1 of 2025. Uh, section 16, this is House File 4576, provides continuous eligibility for 12 months for children under MA. Section 17 is House File 3147. This expands adult dental coverage under MA by removing language that specified that coverage was limited just to specified services. Then sections 18 and 19 are from House File 3691, modified form. Uh, this allows MA to, um, to provide mileage reimbursement for non-emergency medical transportation and ambulance services. And this reimbursement would be adjusted to reflect increases and decreases in the price of gasoline. Sections 20 and 21 are from House File 4062. They provide MA coverage using state only funds for hospice, respite, and end of life care for children who receive care in a facility that is not Medicare certified. Then Section 22 is from House File 4576. It's a governor's proposal allows doula agencies and individual doulas to be directly reimbursed under MA. Section 23 is another governor's proposal. It requires DHS to establish an alternative payment method for tribal federally qualified health centers. Then section 24 is House File 3958, provides MA coverage for seizure detection devices. Then sections 28, 32, 32, and 33 um, allow MA enrollees to opt out of managed care effective January 1 of 2023. Section 29, this is new language, uh, language uh, requested by DHS. It specifies the procedures to be followed by the department if the waiver that allows federal uh, Medicaid funding to be used for medical education or research is not renewed. Then section 37 is from House File 4576. It's the governor's proposal that allows MA to reimburse for the Department of Health fees for newborn screenings that occur in an outpatient setting. Then sections 41 to 46 and 51 to 53 are from House File 11. Uh, these establish a Minnesota Care Public Option effective Jan January 1 of 2025. They extend or continue the lower Minnesota Care premiums that were under effect with the Federal American Rescue Plan. They provide eligibility for undocumented children, require DHS to submit an implementation, an implementation plan for the public option to the legislature. Then section 47 is from House File 4576. Uh, it's a governor's proposal. It requires DHS to continue to provide period, periodic data matching grants to the counties. Section 50 is House File 4472. It requires the commissioner to establish a dental home pilot project. And then section 54 is from House File 3717 requires DHS to, to report to the legislature um, in, in a, to compare current service delivery and payment systems for MA and Minnesota care with at least two alternative models. And, and that is the walkthrough for article three. All right, thank you, Mr. Chan. Um, I will just pause for a moment to see if there are any, any technical questions for members. Okay, not seeing any, so I think we can go on to Article 4. Okay. Right, so, Madam Chair, Article 4 is the healthcare policy article. So that starts on page 251 of the bill. And, and these sec sections 1 to 11, the entire article is all from House File 3636. So, this is the DHS healthcare policy bill, and it makes changes to healthcare program administration. Uh, including changes related to the managed care ombudsperson, uh, children in foster care, telehealth, and also MA trust and annuity language. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. Uh, questions about Article 4. All right, not seeing any. And uh, Ms. Sunderman, I assume that you, because you turned on your video, are ready to go next. Please proceed. Madam Chair and members, I will be walking through Article 5, the Health Related Licensing Board's article. This is on starting on page 265 of the bill. Um, let's see, sections one through six are from House File 2743, the first engrossment. Um, these are the practice supervision requirements for licensed professional clinical counselors, marriage and family therapists, and social workers, allowing for um, remote supervision um, with two-way interactive video. Um, sections 7 through 17 and 21 are from House File 3560, the first engrossment. These are the Board of Dentistry sections, um, modifying specialty and guest dentist licensure, um, uh, allowing dental therapy licensure by credentials, making various clarifying changes, and then combining and modifying fees. Section 18 is House File 2768. This is um, allowing pharmacists to um, administer drugs via intramuscular and subcutaneous um, administration and to also place drug monitoring devices. Section 19 is House File 3099. This is the podiatrist um, licensure one, which um, changes a date relating to the exemption from residency program requirements. And finally, section 20 is from House File 3691 as amended by a DE, and it's one section of the DE that uh, provides temporary requirements governing am ambulance service operations and emergency medical services. And that concludes Article 5. All right. Thank you, Ms. Sunderman. Okay. Article 6, prescription drugs. And we are on page 284. Uh, so, Madam Chair, uh, the first bill is House Bill 58. These are a range of sections, sections 1 to 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 22, 43, and 51. They require health plans to file drug formularies with the Commissioner of Commerce. They require 90 days notice of price changes for formulary drugs with prices that are above a certain specified threshold. They establish requirements for formulary changes made by health plans. Then section four is some House Bill 4504. This uh, modifies and clarifies uh, the existing uh, health department recording, reporting requirements for drug manufacturers. Section six, eight, 10, 12, and 14 to 21 are from House Bill 4398. Those extend the current uh, health department record reporting requirements for drugs uh, beyond manufacturers to also include reporting by pharmacies, pharmacy benefit managers, and wholesalers. It also allows the health department to establish reporting requirements for drugs that the department determines represent a substantial public interest. Then sections 23 to 28, 50 and 52 are House Bill 1183. They prohibit drug manufacturers from imposing excessive price increases, uh, require manufacturers to report information related to these increases, and also allow the Attorney General and the Board of Pharmacy to take action in cases of violations. Then sections 29 to 39 are from House Bill 801. They require the Commissioner of Commerce to establish a prescription drug affordability board. The board is allowed to conduct cost reviews of drugs that exceed certain cost thresholds and make this information public. And the board is also allowed to set upper payment limits for drugs that are, create an affordability challenge. And the AG is also allowed to take action. Then sections 40, 42, 46, 47, 54, 57, and 58 are House Bill 3854. This is the uh, PrEP or PEP bill. 
It allows pharmacists that meet specified criteria to prescribe and administer drugs to prevent HIV subject to standardized protocols, requires health plans and the public health care programs to cover these drugs, provides non-discrimination provisions, and prohibits MA and Minnesota care from requiring prior authorization or step therapy. Then section 41 is House file 2056, just section one of that. This limits health plan cost sharing requirements for enrollees for prescription drugs and related medical supplies that are prescribed to treat diabetes and other chronic diseases. Sections 44, 48, 49, and 59 are from House File 1516. They prohibit PBMs and health carriers from requiring or demonstrating a preference for a bi biological product and also make related changes. House File 45 is House File 3280. Um, this is the, the, the white bagging provision. It prohibits a PBM or health carrier from requiring that a clinician administered drug be covered as a pharmacy benefit and makes related changes. Then House File 53 is from House File 1158. Um, this modifies language that was enacted last year to require mail order pharmacies to include in each order that they ship out uh, a device that allows the patient to detect improper storage or temperature violations. Then House File 55 is, I'm sorry, Section 55 is House File 3924. Um, this provides funding to the central repository to administer the medication repository program. Then Section 56 is House File 3786. This modifies the criteria and procedures for prescribing or administering controlled substances to treat intractable pain. Uh, and that concludes Article 6. All right, thank you, Mr. Chan. And uh, once again, I hope members can really be aware of how much work you've put into getting all of this uh, together for us today. Um, okay, so I think we are ready to move on. Well, are there questions for members, first of all? All right, not seeing any. Um, so let's move on to Article 7. All right, so uh, Madam Chair, Article 7, this is the health insurance article, starts on page 362 of the bill. So sections one, three, five, and eight are from House File 2915. Requires health plans, MA, and Minnesota Care to cover the treatment of ectodermal dysplasias, including reconstructive breast surgery, hair prostheses, and dental services. Section two is House File 56. Requires health plans to include coverage for lymphedema, including certain treatments and medical items. Then sections four, nine, and 10 are House File 447. Requires health plans, MA, and Minnesota Care to cover without enrollee cost sharing, additional diagnostic services or testing after a mammogram if a healthcare provider believes this is necessary. Then sections six and seven are House File 626. Prohibits a health plan company, MA or Minnesota Care from restricting the choice of where an enrollee receives services, for the diagnosis, monitoring and treatment of a rare disease or condition. And that is uh, Article 7. All right, thank you, Mr. Chan. On to Article 8, miscellaneous, um, the mystery article. Yeah. So Article 8, this is miscellaneous starts on page 367. Uh, so sections one, three to nine, and 12 are House File 3595. And, and these sections establish requirements for products containing cannabinoids, including limiting the amount of THC products may contain, prohibiting products containing THC from being sold to persons under 21, uh, modifying testing and labeling requirements, and establishing requirements for, for edible products. Then sections two and 20 are House File 3676. 
They moved the Rare Disease Advisory Council from the University of Minnesota to the Board of, to, to the board of Regents and makes related changes. Um, house sections 10 to 17 and 19 are House File 1023. They reschedule marijuana and non-synthetic tetrahydrocannabinols from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2. Then Section 18 is House File 3972. They prohibit healthcare providers and organ procurement organizations from making decisions about access to anatomical gifts and related services based on, rep, on race and ethnicity. Um, and, and, and let me just mention the other remaining artists, articles since they're very short. Um, article 9 is just the forecast adjustment article. And then Article 10, that is the appropriations article. Uh, we won't go over that since it was covered in the uh, walkthrough of the spreadsheet. <laughs>